Jiro is word, you will reinstate all his siblings as the, as presidents. At the same time, uh, you uh, team sevens practically and Neil get hired. Uh, no, Neil gets reinstated, and the the whole of team sevens has been hired as go employees. See si Yuga, section manager for duels for dueling naman siya, dueling operations. Then see si Gakoto. Uh, he's in charge of making sure that the employees follow the company regulations. See, si Romy naman. She was placed in charge of the kitchen. <laughs> Wala niya. Ano kayo makikilaksa ng pagkain ngayon sa Goha, no? And, um, look, well, uh, siguro sinunod ni Yuwo ang layaw nito. He, um, uh, starts Luke's very own department, the Luke division. E sabi ni Gakuto, wala naman ganito department sa Goha. Bakit nandito? Bakit nandito? Bakit nandito? <laughs> si Umiko, one of the one of the four hosts of the um, of the last uh, uh, group battle tournament, yeah, the one that uh, ended season one. She's now in charge of fix of fixing the lighting in in the main uh, in headquart in the main headquarters. Eh, minsan nagkaroon ng problema sa sa electrical setup ng Goha and it was all traced to her work so kinumpronta siya ni Gakuto and uh, uh, Gakuto saw a sorry sight in, uh, in Omiko's office ang kalat uh, uh, and well Omiko has that uh, that sloppy attitude to match uh, what Gakuto saw in her office. In typical duelist fashion, Gakuto challenges her to a rush duel. So, the duel is on. Eh, may pagkabobol din palang duelist ito si... si... Umiko. Hindi niya pinabasa lahat ng effects ng... lahat ng effects ng bawat card niya sa deck niya. So, well, sinita siya ng ilang beses nila Ranze at ni... ano nung kambal na... Yung kampal na alipores ni Gakuto. Eh, well, umigo. Some to this effect, just said to them, Pakinyo! <laughs> well, eventually, Gakuto beats her. And yun, na-realize niya na, well, is, uh, taking over Goha, which was her true goal. Uh, will not, uh, will not make her online shopping business a um, uh, a success so uh, we can say that nilayasan na niyang Goha and uh, wow let's break this episode down AR this time para medyo para medyo magets natin yung point niya pace well first uh, third of the episode Siguro, daily life's format, kaya medyo mabagal ang pace. But, uh, when, uh, when Gakuto made that challenge, that's when the pace picked up. Natural. Duwal siya ng susunod, kaya the pace will pick up. <laughs> no complaints as to the pacing. Talagang vintage Yu-Gi-Oh! ang pacing. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was when um, Uno napansin ni Gakuto kay Umiko on that Hindi ba dapat tinatrack, da, tinatrack mo yung ano, yung yung pagpalit mo ng mga, mga bubilya Well, he's got a point kasi Umiko can't just uh, replace flickering lights Kailangan meron siyang record of when when it was replaced and uh, dapat, dapat well versed din siya sa uh, yung buhay na itinatagal ng particular type of uh, light bulb like yung mga yung mga daylight lamps na mga, yung makakaba usually kasi uh, maikli ang buhay niyan so 
she really needs to keep tabs of um, which bobs are about to go out and which bobs need replacing uh, quickly uh, it just confirms how how uh, how sloppy a person Omigo well Omigo is actually an alien how sloppy a being Omigo is and led us to the third gear ship where well Gakoto beats Omigo and makes her see the light why did I well again why did I call uh, this particular scene a gear ship <laughs> simply lang it just goes to show you how um, how result on something Gakoto is kasi talagang he's uh, he's he's the straight arrow of team sevens kaya ito pinakita niya talagang straight arrow style of in life and in dueling so these three gear shifts that I saw um, won't have any implications in future episodes but I tell you these three ito palang tatlong gear shift ang panoorin nyo masasabi nyo na this is one of the series' silliest episodes plot wise malinis Yes, kasi kita nyo uh, there were no uh, there were no side stories nor or back stories just just uh, the one and only continuity of this episode talagang pinakita niya yung daily lives ngayon ng Team Sevens now that now that they're all employed by Goha and of course uh, meron isang eksena dito na well Yo hasn't uh, lost track of what he needs to do. And he declares right there that yung pagkaka-employ niya kaila sa team, sa buong Team 7 and Neil's green statement for him, this is the beginning of the end for Rush Duels. Talagang uh, bala pa rin niyang wasakin ang Rush Duel format. So, that through this plot, well, we just confirmed that Yuo is still the big bad of this uh, of season 2 kaya malinis ang plot ganong kalinis ang plot na to so pace flow and plot they all came together for this episode uh, I don't know how Gakuro ended up dueling a uh, a duelist as sloppy as Omiko Kaya, this is one of the silliest episodes of the series. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 69. Medyo exaggerated. Kanyo siguro bakit one thumb up lang. Eh, it's, it was, it's a silly episode. Well, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens is known for its silliness. I'll tell you mga ka-lifestyle. Kasi, they, um, yung, yung sloppiness ni, ni Umiko, parang exaggerated eh. Nang hindi kailangan that's what I that's what I feel for that's what I'm feeling for this episode they could have they could have made Omiko's dueling uh, moderate but uh, but it just goes to show you how uh, how sloppy actual Yu-Gi-Oh players can be okay? I've encountered some sloppy players myself during uh, when I was uh, well, when uh, when uh, when there's no pandemic yet and I was actively competing, talagang may may encounter ka talagang ganong ka ganong ka slap in the player. But medyo exaggerated yung pagkaslap ni ano nito eh ni Omigo. Uh, Bridge should have. Uh, may suggestion ko lang. Bridge could have given her given uh, gave her a fighting chance against uh, Gakoto 
without all this uh, sloppiness going on with her. I think Sojo Bridge should have ended her sloppiness when she activated Fusion. Get on. And, uh, siguro, eh, kahit yung sa effect ng Fusion Monster niya, ano eh, hindi, sloppy pa rin siya. Then, the duel scene would have been more exciting kung natapos ang sloppiness ni Omigo when she activated Fusion. Hey, by the way guys, Gakuto now also has his own Fusion Monster. Pinakilala niya rito. It's named, uh, Yamaterasu, the Ascended Ruler. Will we see the other characters of Sevens uh, introduce their own fusion monster? I am 99% sure that it will happen kasi lead up na si Kakoto eh. So, Uy, hindi yun ang, hindi yun, hindi yun ang rating ko ah. Okay, hindi pa yun ang confirmation ng rating ko. But, yeah, it'll be the start. It'll be the start. So again, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7th, episode 69. We'll just have to wait for the next episode. Let's just do the drill mark lifestyle. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. So, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. We know all that now that Fena has just asserted herself and her decision to, to personally lead the um, charge to Eden has has paid off but all of a sudden an island comes out of the sea and it's pra pra practically beckoning Fena to go there so lumanding sila and um hindi na nagtataka ngayon yung crew niya sila Yukimaru sila sila Shitan nope sinabi nga ni Fena uh, in this episode the moment we landed ashore my doubts have all been erased. So, but, um, all she ever did here was show the way. Oh, dito tayo pumunta. Oh, dito tayo pumunta. Doon tayo, doon. Doon tayo. It led them to, um, uh, this huge cave na eh, mukhang lahat ng kayamanan sa buong mundo ay nandun na. Talaga nakakalat lang eh. Pero sinabi ni Fena, hindi ito ang pinunta na ang pupunta natin dito. So uh, with Yukimaru in tow, pinuntahan niya. Uh, na sense na niya agad. Okay, this is the place. Nakita niya sa parang isang parang parang isang stage siya. In the middle of that, meron siya nakita parang um kumaga footprint na when kasang kasa yung kanyang paa it's an absolute fit for her feet so from then from out of the blue bigla na lang siya sumayaw and um Yukimaru is just um kumaga yeah he's awestruck took him uh, to the time when him and Fena were still kids at sumasayaw din nun si Fena pero this time, mas pulido yung sayaw ni Fena. And at, as if she was, for every move she makes, she's following a certain block. Kasi, hati-hati yung ganun yun eh. So, doon siya pumupunta. Then, she ended up on, siguro, the left corner, stage left. Kumbaga, stage left. Doon siya tumigil. And, well, kinubusan naman siya ni Yukimaru. At right, right at that moment, bigla may, bigla may nungabas na stone blocks na ganun. Kaya pala may mga ganong hati-hating, hati-hating ganun eh. These are blocks. Talagang lumalabas na ganun. Until finally, 
yung pinakamataas na block ang lumabas. Lo and behold, there's now a staircase in front of Pena and Yukimaru. So while this was going on, Abel's party has landed. So the Blue Giant is now also there. Nagpadala na siya ng landing party. Mukhang susugurin na nila ang, ano, ang, ang mga bida natin. And final scene. Whoop! Pena just took Yukimaru's hand. Sinabi lang niya, something to respect. Let's go, Yukimaru. Mmm. Ano yan? Kilig moment ba yan? Hindi, but anyway. <laughs> Let's break this episode down ARD style. Pace! Bumikap lang ang pace nung, uh, nung pinakita na uh, pinakita na si Abel along with, his, along with his own crew na lumanding na. Lumanding na dun mismo sa Eden, sa, sa, sa mismong isla. Doon lang pumikap ang pace. But, don't get me wrong mga ka-lifestyle. The pacing of this episode was really good. Dahil, yung build up to that moment, nandito. Kasi, everyone on the Bonito saw that island come out of the water na ganun sa, sa gitna ng dagat lumabas. It picked up the pace in microscopic bit. And, well, the pace told me that Eto na, JG. This is Eden. Things. Business is about to pick up. Prepare yourself. Parang gano'n na sinasabi ng pacing sa akin eh. But, so while they were traversing what Fena is uh, instinctively uh, walking walking on this certain path, ayun nga, palapit na ng palapit ang party ni Abel. Hanggang, ayun nga, dun sa medyo palapit na sa final scene, lumanding na ang Blue Giant. Dun, dun mismo sa island na yun. So, the pacing was superb. Talagang, it really built up to the time when Abel finally landed on Eden. Pero, sinabi mismo ni Fena, hindi ito ang Eden. It's more likely the place at the end of the top of that staircase na lumito na lang sa, kanila, sa, hanap, sa harap nila ni Yukimaru. Low naman! Well, first gear shift here was when, of course, the, on that island showed itself. Talagang lumabas sa dagat na ganun. <laughs> Everyone was shocked. Okay? The crew of the Bonito, even the crew of the Blue Giant, which, which, which uh, siguro, pero they're not Siguro, they're, they're not that far behind just to see this. Ah, laki yung isla! Bigla nalang, bigla nalang lilito sa gitna ng dagat na ganun. You could, you could actually see that, you could probably see that from miles away. Even from where, even from the Blue Giant's vantage point. The rising of that island signals the climax of this anime. Second gear ship was when Fena and her crew uh, reached this big, this this huge cave na puro uh, na puro yaman puro ginto pu puro wow grabe si eh, si Chubaki nga eh hawak-hawak na niyang gano'n puro jaman puro hiyas jewels sabi niya I can give I can give my parents the best wedding ever with this nagpaplano na nga siya kung nung, kung nung gagawin niya sa nakuha niyang yaman na yun Eh, he, he just wants to make his parents happy. Despite all this, bago tinawag na gear ship, simply lang, Fena realized it right away na hindi ito ang Eden. This is not what we are looking for. So, na sense na lang niya, pumunta na siya doon, okay, sunod si Yukimaro, syempre. Final gear ship was, was, was when, uh, Fena started dancing. Bakit kung tinawag na gear ship to? It's a no-brainer of a gear ship. Because, in, probably, instinctively, alam na ni Fena kung anong gagawin para lumabas yung staircase na yun. She has to dance on these specific blocks. And, well, 
Kung napansin niyo, yun din yung mga blocks na pinapaka niya habang sumasayaw siya. Yun ang, mag, yun, ang, yun ang naging staircase. It's a pivotal gear shift. Mean, fuck. At least, Fena and Yukimaru are now several steps closer to the real Eden, which is nandun sa taas. Wow! These three gear shifts, I tell you mga kalaistad, will play a role in the final two episodes of this anime. Ngayon, kung uh, kung hindi nyo pa rin mag... Kunyari, if, you, well, if all of us would see the final two episodes, you can go back to this one on how it all played out. So, this is a very crucial episode. Tandaan nyo, mga kalaistad. We are on the road to the finale. Final three episodes na po. Pero, the road to the finale started as early as episode 8. Pero, dito na talaga magkakasagupan ang dalawang, pa dalawang panig eh. Yung, uh, yung crew ni Fena laban sa crew ni Abel. Plotwise, the flashback sequence is just... Two seconds, mga ganun lang. Negligible. Malinis ang plot. Kapag Pinakita lang yung flashback scene na yun to enhance the um uh what's it called this the, the importance of Yukimaro's role now in Fena's life because well he has seen Fena dance before pero uh, parang playful dancing but now that kasi probably in his head he's um Compare, he's making comparisons ne. Siguro, kanya siguro. Wow. Ang ganda pala sumayo ni Fena ngayon. So, basically, he's, um, flabbergasted. More likely. Galing na ano, magaling yung, yung plot ng episode na to. Talagang malinis siya. Kung nilagyan pa nila ng isa pang Kahit isa pang maliit na flashback sequence to, mawawala yung ano eh, yung, yung aura na gustong i-project ng, ng episode na to. This episode is trying to tell us that, Hoy, this anime is about to end at dito magsisimula yun. No, that's, that's what the plot is telling me. Ganun kasi kalinis eh. So, pace, flow, and plot, need I explain more? They all came together for this episode. So, random mo na ang magiging katapusan ng anime na to dito pa lang sa episode na to. Fena and Yukimaru are now several steps closer to Eden now. So, and Abel's uh, entourage, yeah, they're ready for a fight now. Eh, hindi pa nila yung mga iba nilang kasama dun sa, sa, sa Cave of Riches na yun. Talaga mag Wow! It's gonna be war! And, probably, Abel is going to do everything he can to stop Fena from crossing into Eden. Baka yan ang mangyari dyan. So, Fena Power Princess Episode 10! Isip, isip pa. Ganda ang episode nga eh. Oh! Two times eh! All praises aside, Fena will probably end with a bang. Or, oh, uh, I'm sensing something here. Eh. We're going to see a major character death in the final two episodes. 60%. Pero, I really want to see if Abel also has a calling to Eden. Siguro, um, talagang magkakasubukan sila ni, ni Fena rito. Because, uh, sinabi nila na ni Fena na uh, that you, K.K. Abel, that he also probably has a calling to Eden. So, whose calling will win out? Yun ang tanong dito. Uh, you feel that Fena Pirate Princess is just a one-piece rip-off? Ah, ah. For me, Fena is a fictionalized anime. Because, well, Grace O'Malley is a real-life pirate and 
Um, the Legend of El Dorado. Yep, discussed in dito. It's more, it's more true to life than One Piece. I hate to say it to the One Piece fans, but <laughs> para sa akin, I'll take Fena anytime. Kaya, tutok na tayo mga lifestyle. Final two episodes na, magiging mula na next week. As of this recording. So again, Santa Pirate Princess episode 10. Pao din, hindi ko na yung rating. Well, we just have to do the drill. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. Kaya, kamag siya, tutukan niyo na to eh. So, while we are all waiting for episode 11, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Pace. 
medyo nagbagal ang pace sa middle third ng episode because they well, Botan realized that they didn't they don't need to secure this shard by force kasi simple lang naman ang hiling ng bata she wa he wants to show this to his um to his uh to his dead mother who likes pretty things who likes beautiful things eh maganda ang itsura kasi ng uh ng shard of destiny na to na may number 13 so for convenience let's call this shard number 13 eh so no no umira na konsensya ni Botan dito ang proposal niya yun they need to secure this shard by well by uh, by subtleness pose as someone na kailangan ng shard na to and yup so they did there uh, sabi niya sa sabi niya sa tatay ng tatay ni Peter na well we're, we're willing to pay whatever amount you wish eh sinabi ka ng tatay 200,000 kroner and it's yours so well they were able to secure the money ayun binayaran nila but much to the much to the uh, surprise of the father wala na dun yung shard so the pacing will make you understand this kaya okay lang ang pacing then uh, it suddenly became a race against time again kasi if that train hits 160 kph the shard automatically uh, will automatically teleport it to somewhere to a random, random area ang delegado rito kasi ay ito because they have uh, learned their lesson from the Philadelphia experiment ang actual cost pala ng experiment na yon ay isang shard of tesla uh, the Eldridge that was, that was involved in the Philadelphia experiment did teleport from Philadelphia to Norfolk, Virginia and back pero um, taliwas officially official report ng US Navy nun lahat ng crew nun ay namatay because uh, like in the train that landed on Oslo nagfuse ang ang mga human bodies dun sa sa mga non-organic na material okay, so they don't want the same thing to happen to the Bergen Express kaya talagang because of the pacing maramdam mo that it is a race against time so mas maraming tao kasi madadami dito because it's I think it's I think it's Norway's busiest train the Bergen Express Yeah, point taken. <laughs> Flow the man. Well, first gearship here was the opening scene. Uh, Peter was out picking pockets. Like it's it's his usual day. Cause he he was too sad. He was too sad. Poor kid. It was due to this gearship that we found out that I think one of the pockets Peter picked was the one with shard number thirteen. Kaya napunta sa kanya ang shard na to. I think, yeah, if you could deep dive into this gear ship, he probably picked the pocket of one of the spies that were after this same shard. But I don't think it's the one that, uh, the one that finally got the shard. Ibang spy siguro to, yung pinag, uh, yung pinag niya. So that's what this gear ship will make you realize. Now, second gear ship was Botan's conscience taking over. Kasi, naawa siya sa batay. And for him to have this shard, marami pwede mangyari. Whether this kid knows the shard's power or not. So, yun nga ang sinadjust niya, we should take this, uh, we shouldn't take this shard by force from this kid. No, he doesn't deserve it. You know, you know, you know, explanation. Oh, agree naman yung buong team. Ah, ang hindi lang umagri sa idea niyan ko ay si Kuruma. Told you guys, he's a buffoon. So, event, well, majority wins. 
So, umag na rin si Kuruma. So, yun nga, sinabi nila na, okay, we're, already, we're willing to pay. They eventually paid. But, unfortunately, they didn't get the shard. It was uh, the spy that looked like Dio that got the shard. Okay. Eh, yun pala, may, may pagkamanturukot din pala itong, si, itong, itong spy na to. Dinukutan niya ang bata. And replaced it. And, wow, his hands were that fast. Akala nyo ba naman, i-replace ang shard with a ruler. <laughs> Nang ganong kabilis. It's, it's probably faster than the kid. That's what this gearship will make you realize. Now, final gearship is the final scene. This gearship wouldn't happen if it weren't for the second gearship. Sinalaman lang lahat na, Uy, natinggoy na pala sila ng kakompetensya nila. I guess, through this gearship, we now know that the main protags, uh, they finally know what's at stake. I think they finally realize now that Japan isn't the only country interested in the shards of Tesla. Other, there are other countries as well. Yeah. <laughs> they got their work cut out for them. So these three gearships that I saw, the final two will play a role in future episodes. So if ever, if something plays out that is uh, related to these two gearships, you can always go back to episode two on how it uh, transpired, on how it led to that. Plot-wise, Malinis, I saw Robin three flashback sequences here but they're all an e the the first one was probably negligible because it just showed uh, the origin story as to how Peter became uh, a petty thief how he became a pickpocket so uh, that's sort of negligible because it's a factor sa main continuity end ng episode malinis pa rin ang plot no complaints need I say more yung race against time element nandun pa rin eh pero for a fleeting moment uh, yung konsyensya ni Botan ang nag-dictate sa to call this sort of dictated the plot pero malinis pa rin malinis pa rin so base flow and plot they all came together for this episode. Man. What an episode it, it has been. Talagang, it just goes to show you how both dangerous and valuable the shards of Tesla are. Someone forcibly unlocked um, Tesla's shards. I don't know who, but I'm very sure we're gonna find out who it is. So, Tesla Note. Episode 2 Like I told you guys in the last review I love a good spy thriller every now and then All the elements of a spy thriller anime are in this one. I say, um, although na medyo softy pa si Botan, she showed her human side here. I say, oh nga, this kid has a shard of Tesla, has shard number 13. But does he deserve a, a beating just because he has it? She's got a point there. Um, maga siguro, hindi na tayo dapat mandamay ng ibang tao by forcibly taking a shard from them. Nope. We need to do this. Um, we need to have a subtle approach as this is, accord this is according probably to her mindset. We need a subtle approach to this this time. So, yun na. Ayun nga lang. Lahat ng hirap nila, eh, 
we Filipinos have a say. I'll say it in Filipino. Ikaw ang nagsaing, iba ang kumain. Uh, you, you cooked the rice, but someone else ate it. That's, <laughs> that's the, uh, that's how the episode played out. Kalaban pa, ang kalabang spy pa ang nakakuha sa shark na to. After all they, after all they went through. But that's how spy thrillers work. The main protag not only has to deal with potential true enemies of, uh, uh, for these shards, but also competition from other spies. The main protag has has her work cut out for her. So again, Tesla Note Episode Two. So for the next episode, we'll just have to do the drill, mga lifestyle. We will wait for next week and watch that. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Mukhang nakukuha ko ng style ng anime na to eh. One episode with at least two to three stories. Kasi ganito yung ginawa sa episode na to. So first story was about um what you call this Ronald it, it, it's not Ronald pala it's Ronaldo Ronaldo's penchant of not fulfilling his obligations yeah he became the victim here of Mr uh, of his uh, of his editor no one pa siya kinukulitan na tapusin ng manuscript na for part 2 of his autobiography Eh, sa sobrang busy niya handling Dralok, hindi niya nagawa. So, pinunta na siya kagad ang editor niya. Eh, may pagkasadista itong editor niya. May dalang battle axe. And, there came a point na he even, what you call this? He even bribed Dralok into cornering Ronaldo. Ang pinaka-bribe niya rito, video games. Uh, we all know, how much of a video game addict Dralok is? Kaya siguro na kapon to bilang bagbar. <laughs> but anyway, the corner niya and uh, he led Ronaldo into this parang Iron Maiden. Na, well, well, it looks like an Iron Maiden pero wala siya mga tusok-tusok sa loob. Pinakita meron mga laptop sa loob. <laughs> so, he was, Ronaldo got trapped in there and sinabi ng editor niya, Okay, dyan ka magtatrabaho hanggat, hanggat matapos mo manuscript mo. Hindi ka lalabas dyan. Oh, so sabi ni Tralo, okay, so that's how it works. <laughs> Second story, well, they were after this, um, uh, this vampire named Nudenium. Nakawala ito sa, nakawala ito sa isang vampire research laboratory. So, they were called into the scene. Gusto kasi ni Dralok na oh, bayaran siya ni Ronaldo as compensation for the loss of his castle. Got a point. <laughs> eh, yung yung pagkalaki-laking bahay na bigla nang masusunod ng ganun-ganun lang. Yeah, you should say compensation. In order for to at least um, get the money trickling in para ma-restore ma na niya yung castle niya, he goes out on his own. So he hunts down this particular vampire on his own. Jalok meets up with um, three kids who are also hunting down this vampire. E yung pala hindi nila kaya. Now, you, you wanna know why this vampire is named Dudenium? Kasi, ang damit lang niya rito, his cape and a bunch of flowers covering his penis. <laughs> ano itong power niya? He has the ability to control plants. Ako. Talaga napalabas si Dralok dito. Until, well, Ronaldo comes to his rescue. Grabe. The weirdness doesn't stop there. Third story. Well, meron dumating from the Vampire Control Division ng, ng Tokyo Police. Yeah. 
Tokyo Police has such a division. So, binisita ang agency niya to check on this vampire he has just uh, allied himself with yung nga, si Dralok. Eh, gusto nilang kausapin ni si, si Dralok on checking on kung talagang threat nga ito to, to humanity or entry-level vampire lang ito. So, is that harmless? Unless, may supervision ng isang vampire hunter. Yun nga, si Ronaldo. But Ronaldo is trying his best to keep this this officer away from Dralo kasi babae. Maganda. At talagang, masasabi natin na malabirhin ang dating kasi sinabi na mismo ni Dralo in this episode, nothing is tastier to a vampire than the blood of a virgin. E bigla dumating si Dralo. Sabi ni Dralo, ah, ingay rito. <laughs> Ayun, nakita niya yung, yung magandang uh, vampire control officer. Well, he was really courteous. Talagang, yung uh, courtesy niya to women talagang pang noble. Talagang, wow! He didn't even give a hit that he's going to bite this girl. It's, well, um, siguro na, na-disappoint yung officer She storms out of the office, vowing to come back. Eh, sabi naman ni... Eh, sabi naman ni Dralok, I was just being polite to her. Uh, what the hell? Pero, sabi pa ni Dralok, I am looking forward for her return because I smell that blood so good. <laughs> Woo! Let's break this episode down ARD style. So, we're gonna break it down the best we can. Pace. If your true goal is to is not to present an episode with three stories, do not do what this anime does. Kasi I've seen this format before. It's from Cells at Work Season 2. Ganito ganito format ng Cells at Work Season 2. Kaya eight episodes lang sila noon. Kumbaga, in ex- they sort of expressed um, two episodes each into one episode. Pero, uh, maganda yung pagkaka-pacing. As in, you will fully understand the plot and what um, and what the characters are going through. Ganito rin dito sa episode 2 ng anime na to. So, the pacing is... Um, well formulated for such a format kasi tatlong ano eh ta- tatlong storya ito eh I tell you guys talagang um, well balanced and well formulated sorry ang pacing ng episode na to kaya ayos flow naman Whoop. I didn't see a gear shift in ano eh in um in the first story, kasi, <laughs> sa loob-loob ko lang, tangin na mo, Ronaldo, may obligasyon ka pala, hindi mo pang pinupulfill, walang yaka. ka. That story, well, namaya, iyan ako ha, i-discuss natin yun sa plot. But, I saw a gear shift in the, uh, in the second story, wherein, yun nga, Ronaldo, uh, had to, had to help Dralok out, uh, in taking out this, vampire lord, kasi, ang pagkakasense ni Dralok dito, Vampire Lord ito, malakas ang kapangyarihan. So, it was probably a mistake for him to to hunt this vampire down on his own. Yep, it almost cost him and a kid's life. Buti na lang dumating si Ronaldo para isalba sila. This gear shift tells you that, well, aha, it confirms how weak of a vampire uh, Dralok is. Pero, yung knowledge niya of the vampire hierarchy is very valuable. If, if Dralok were to give Ronaldo the heads up about this vampire lord, wala, kanina pa nila siguro nagapi ito. But, due to Dralok's need for money to, to restore his castle, talagang, um, uh, nag-soloplight siya rito saglit. 
and it almost cost him really almost cost him then the final gear shift that I saw here was um, when uh, the vampire control officer introduced herself to Ronaldo gusto niya kausapin si Dralo to see kung talagang according to Ronaldo's story virtually harmless ang ang vampire na to kumaga entry level pa lang so it can be supervised by a vampire hunter I see further I see future implications with this gear ship kaya ako tinawag na gear ship ito because hmm so the police have a vampire control division So that means they will have to keep a close eye on Dralo. Kasi um syempre magda-doubt to mga yan kung talagang entry level vampire lang to si Dralo. Because well, bottom line, Dralo doesn't look like an entry level vampire. Talagang talagang vampire lord ang forma niya. Talaga, with the uh, matching regal clothes, the cape at saka yung itsura niya, yung yung hairstyle niya talagang masasabi mong vampire lord ito pero hindi nope looks are deceiving <laughs> so these two gear shifts that I saw yeah it will definitely play a role in future episodes we will see more um, vampire lords being taken out by the tandem we will see more of that vampire control officer talagang siguro ito talagang pupuntirya sa dalawang ito <laughs> And it'll always be a, hil a hilarious ending. So, plot-wise. Tatlong story eh. Planchado. Right? Maganda kasi yung naging transition from one story to the next. Hindi yung, hindi siya biglaan. Umaga, um, there's somewhat a connection between the three of them. Kaya, yung uh, pagka-switch from one story to another, eh, halos hindi, halos hindi yung makahalata. Kaya, planchado ang plot ng episode, ang overall plot ng episode na to. So, I got no complaints with the plot. Pace, flow, and plot all came together for this episode. So, giving us another, another zany episode from this anime. <laughs> Talagang, Woo! Yung Wow! Right? Talagang yung dynamic between Ronaldo and Dralo Matatawa ka talaga Matatawa ka talaga Excuse me So The Vampire Guys in No Time Episode 2 Deserved Two thumbs up. Kasi kanina lang hinahanapan ko ng mali ito eh. I am deliberately looking for faults in this episode. Pero, wala akong makita eh. Every, well, three, three stories. Each of these three stories talaga nakakatawa ang istorya. Even famous vampire hunters like Ronaldo has his financial problems. Even Dralok has his own financial problems because he couldn't raise the funds that fast in in for for the restoration of his castle. Nah, we all know Kusiro Sumira. <laughs> so, kumada, we can see his Dralok stay in Ronaldo's uh, agency as pambayad utang ni Ronaldo. I think. Ronaldo is uh, mature enough to hold himself accountable for what he what he did to to Dralok's home in the pilot. So, talaga pinababayanan niya tumira rito yung itong vampire na to. And well, if they are going to uh, to hunt high-level vampires down, they really need to work as a team. Kasi sabi natin na weakling si Dralok as a vampire, pero his knowledge of the vampire hierarchy is it's worth its weight in gold to vampire hunters if Ronaldo takes um Jalo's knowledge seriously 
Lalo siyang sisikat bilang Vampire Hunter. Lalo siya magiging credible na Vampire Hunter. So, the more credible you are, the more clients you get. Ganun lang naman yan in business. So again, The Vampire Dies in No Time, Episode 2. Two thumbs up. Tayo tatong story lang. Two thumbs up. Tayo mga guys. Maganda yung mix. Maganda yung transition. So for the next episode, we'll just have to do the drill. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. I can't wait because talagang Battle of Laps ang anime na to. And it concerns a vampire. So, in the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Mm. Let's run the story down a bit. So, we start with um, an incident in the asylum. Uh, it's, a, it's a newly discovered um, underground world. Uh, meron ditong uh, sinasa, meron ditong nire-rescue na parang sundalo who suddenly turns into a monster. Uh, sabi ng mga kasama niya na rumi-rescue sa kanya, sana he was afflicted with Randolph Syndrome. Now, as the story went on, Randolph Syndrome is the disease that this underground world brought with them nung na-discover to. So, uh, based on what, uh, what, what I personally saw in this episode, mukhang kumakalat ng sakit na to. Sounds familiar, mga ka-lifestyle. This guy named um, Shigure had, has this um, goal of becoming a hero. Kaya siya, well, nag-apply siya bilang sleeper. Now, these sleepers are special, uh, what you call this? Ito yata yung pinaka-swat nila eh, ng, ng expeditionary force dun sa asylum. It's a, uh, he's been oriented as how, how and what to do in case of an emergency or in case of something like this which na encounter nga nila um uh, yung mismong na nahawang tao yun well they had no choice but to put it to put that soldier down kasi marami na pa nang napatay na sundalo to while they were while uh while they were while he was being oriented she could have found the courage to to, to personally take up this infected na soldier. His, uh, Shigure's commanding officer here, tawag nila si XO. Si XO Leslie. Ang tanging weapon lang nito si Leslie, isang samurai. Uh, nung nabistra sa cover fire ni Shigure itong, itong nahawang sudanong ito, Leslie took its head off. Tapos, final scene, well, Pinaalala lang ni, ni Leslie si Shigure that it's okay to be scared. Because being scared down here is the only, well, something to this effect, is the only means of survival. Everyone that has, uh, that had uh, the will to die has already left here. We're gonna deep, we're gonna deep dive into that later. So... Uh, because of that, ayun, forman nang nagpakilala si Shigure sa kanyang mga kasama. Uh, platoon 11 ang tawag, pero it's more pop, it's more popularly known as the Eva Platoon. Kasi, ang pinaka leader nila, babae, si Eva, ang bangalan. So, let's break this episode down ARD style. Pace! Opening scene pa lang, tense ne. Here's what the pacing made me understand. There is a new world that has been discovered underground that is leading people to um to this disease known as Randolph syndrome. Parang uh, parang parang COVID-19 eh, no? Pero if you t- if you take a look at this Randolph syndrome, it's much worse. If you probably if you stay down there too long dun sa under sa asylum you will you will get the full signs and symptoms of this disease. Kaya yun nga yung nangyari. Dun sa pumasok na sundalong nag 
nag-turn into a monster. So, you wouldn't want to get this disease yourself. <laughs> Kaya pala, sinabi ng ng handler, pinaka-handler ng grupo that, okay, sigure, that um, at the first sign of passing out, let me know. Something to that effect. Ganun ang, uh, sa, ganun ang sabi niya kay sigure. And I thought, does this have to do with Randolph Syndrome? Ayun nga. Uh, I just, the pacing just made me, um, it just made me uh, piece it all together. Kasi, so opening scene, passed out yung yung na res yung nilerescue na sundalo. Then all of a sudden, biglang fuck in his um, in his unconscious state, he becomes a scarred. Ang tawag ng mga na, na mga monster na nandito sa mundo ito scarred. Uh, and according to an explanation of one of Shigure's uh, comrades, a scarred is originally an animal, an organism from the surface world. Yung mundong kinabibilangan natin, tao, hayop, insekto, basta any living organism na tumira sa ibabo ng mundo. It got affected with Randolph Syndrome and uh, for too long, ito ang kinalabasan. Oh boy. <laughs> I got no complaints with the pacing because it clearly, it made it clear to me that this anime is in the middle of a crisis. Despite um, discovering an underground world, eh, you also, they, were, they, they inadvertently discovered a new disease which came from this world. Flow naman! The first gear ship here was the opening scene. Why did I call this a gear ship? Well, you can say that, um, if it weren't for this gear ship, hindi mama motivate ang main protag to uh, to just uh, be scared of this world in itself. So forcing him to do what he had to do as a sleeper. Kaya uh, naging factor ang opening scene nato. Second gear ship was when Shigure um, got. Rudely introduced to his um, to his new assignment, so medyo uh, they were they were they were about to throw a welcome party to him. Eh, ginalon siya yung yung inahatod ngano para may luman para may pumat na ganon. Eh sa harapan niya harapan lamang siya ginalon eh. So he passed out. So. Um, I think a few hours later, ayun na, uh, he begins consciousness, he meets his XO, yung, yung, yan, yung team leader nila, who is also a, uh, parang, parang doctor din eh, si Leslie. If it weren't for this gear ship, um, hindi mabubuo yung ano eh, yeah, hindi mabubuo yung team nila, kasi, Shiguri is the new kid on the, on the team, so, I think they now know what um Sigur Sigur's um weakness is. Kumaga mag may pagka magugulat din ito. <laughs> so the slightest uh the slightest hint of surprise he passes out with his eyes open. <laughs> I mean, it's a funny, it's a funny moment pero gear ship ang tawag ko dito kasi Mop he he got rudely acquainted with his new team. Final gear ship was, ayun nga, after when they were finally able to take out this um, human turned scarred. Because, well, Shiguri just took it upon himself to fuck my, to say to himself, fuck my fear. I am taking this, this monster out myself. So, nagpala ba nga kay Leslie eh. Let me handle this. Okay, eh, sabi naman ni, ni Leslie, Okay, if you fail, I'll handle it. <laughs> Parang hindi reassuring yun eh. But, why did I call this a gear ship? Simple lang! This is a character development gear ship for Shigure. Whether, whether you like it or not, it's a character development moment for the main protagonist. Let's just say what... Um, 
His courage was based on his fear of this place. Kasi, samot sa aring mga hayop at demonyo pa lang ang, ang makaasagupa nila rito. So, it's okay to be scared kasi yun ang naging basis tuloy ng uh, ng decision niya na talagang talagang sumabak na sa labanan. Even if he has to take take this monster up by himself. Ganun ang ginawa niya. So later on, in-explain na ni Leslie sa kanya yung ginawa niya. That was okay kasi talagang naramdaman ni Leslie na natatakot na si Sigure. Kaya hindi siya hindi siya makapag uh, hindi siya makapag uh, makasali sa labanan ng ganun hindi siya makapag all out sa labanan. That's why I called it a gear shift. So, these three gear shifts that I saw especially the last one now that he has um, discovered fear-based courage, it will serve him well down the line in this anime. Ka Casey Gure. Plot-wise, Malinis. It's a part of the episode. Do you need... um? Except for certain cases, but in this, in this one, I think this anime is going for the main protag's character development as much as possible because this is totally uncharted territory for any human. And this is this is what the plot is making me realize just now. Iba eh, iba ang environment na to because I I totally deduced it already. The moment a human passes out, that's when Randolph syndrome kicks in. Kaya pala ini-emphasize ng kanilang handler na at the moment you pass out, tell me right away. Siguro meron silang um, provisionary measures just in case this happens. Kasi um, it also, it's also telling me that that Randolph syndrome is this dangerous a disease to, to catch. The moment you pass out, kasi in in the scene where he's um, uh, where, so, where he has already gathered enough courage to to take this uh, scar out himself by himself, ah, medyo na lalaboy matanye. Eh. Uh, if you've seen the episode, napansin nyo, medyo na lalaboy yung ano yung screen. I don't know if he's um I don't know if, uh yeah definitely this is Shiguri's point of view. Either he is uh getting sleepy or he's Lose, slowly losing consciousness as in ganun ang itsura eh ganun ang itsura kapag uh, sa isang tao kapag um, inaantok na siya or talagang mawawala na siya ng malay lumalabo ng luma, parang throbbing ang, ang vision mo labo linaw labo linaw ganun yun so it had to provide a clean plot for this kind of a pilot. Kasi, talaga ko masisira ang, epi- ang, ang pilot na to kapag nilagyan mo ng back or side story. Tingin ko lang, mga ka-lifestyle. Kaya malinis pa rin ang plot. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this pilot. And, hmm, Looks like we're in for a for another for another crisis anime. It takes me back to the days of uh, GB8. You still remember GB8? Last year we reviewed that one. It's also a crisis anime. And uh, way back ten years to High School of the Dead. Parang ganon yun. Pero ito uh, talaga may sakit na uh, na nilalabanan ng buong ang buong humanity but despite that they're still going into going in the asylum just to discover new species um there's also rumors of a new fuel source oy yeah we can say nakapanapanabig ang anime nito 
Parang ano siya eh. Yeah, it, remind, it also reminds me a lot of Aliens. Yung kay Sigourney Weaver na movie. Parang ganyan yan. So, Deep Insanity, The Lost Child, Episode 1. Deserve. Totonsa! What should we expect from this anime? Ako! Ang buwad doon. Um, the lead characters are up against Oh, I forgot. There's another crisis anime that I uh, that I really like. God Eater. Ah. It also reminds me a lot of God Eater yung yung pacing nito. Parang ganoon din yung sa pacing ng God Eater noon. And Yeah, kasi they are they, they they did discover a new world below the surface of the earth, but at the same time this underground world unleashed a disease like no other. Uh, they call it Randolph Syndrome. Kumbaga ang siguro ang ang hallmark niya when you suddenly pass out and then you pass out for too long, mm, you're totally afflicted with this disease na. Magiging scarred ka na. So, kumbaga considered incurable ka na, you need to be euthanized. Just like what they just like what um, Shiguri and his uh, comrades did here. Kasi halata na ano eh. Nalata nila na dating sudalo ito. Na nahawaan na ng Radolf Syndrome. They got no choice but to put it down. Kasi may mga tinumba ng may mga tinumba ng kapa niya sundalo dito eh. Just had to do it. Kaya you know what? Crisis animes are uh, are a joy to watch because uh, you would always assume that the pacing is uh, slow but excruciating. <laughs> but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's fast because if they release the pacing of the episode, na to, hindi ma appreciate yung yung race against time element, the the sense of urgency element, all. You can feel in a crisis anime. Uh, I felt all of those things here in the pilot of uh, Deep Insanity. So, but they're expecting um, good things at least sa anime na to. Kaya, tukaw natin to. So again, Deep Insanity, The Lost Child, Episode 1. Two thumbs up. First two thumbs up for this anime. Can't wait to uh, can't wait for more action next episode. So what do we do now, Mahaka Lifestyle? Well, we'll just have to do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Kaya, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. So, uh, we picked up for the pilot left off. Uh, inaccept na ng ng assassin ang kanilang, kanilang ang kanyang deal with ahem what? bakit ka na ang pangalan ng, ng Diyos ang yun? ahem <laughs> I still don't know why he's been given uh, a chance to choose whatever uh, mag magic skills and attributes he needs to to develop himself as the assassin that will take out the hero. Kailangan kasi within uh, within 18 years of his life, of his new life, he needs to kill this hero. Pero, merong kondisyones. Kailangan mamatay muna yung demon lord. So, in essence, as much as possible, kailangan yung hero ang pumatay sa demon lord. Hindi yung, ano, hindi yung Assassin. After choosing one skill each from each class and um, getting all four basic attributes, kasi ano yun eh, parang, parang Yu-Gi-Oh card game. Merong water, fire, earth, wind, light, and dark. He chose the four basic ones. So, ang nilip out niya, light and dark. Okay! Anda na siya. Hmm. Ipinanganak na siya into the house of Tuatade. This is a clan 
specializing in medicine and assassination. Talk about the best of both worlds. <laughs> Times passed. He's now seven years old. Uh, well, uh, he's now a skilled hunter at his age. Uh, and he also gets to cook. When he, after a successful hunt, kasi yun ang, yun ang naging deal niya sa nanay niya. Nakapagluto siya, masarap din, masarap din pala siya magluto rito. Then, uh, his father every week checks on his physique. Talagang pinauhubad siya in a, in a secret, in their secret training room. So, tinitignan ko ba, ano, pina, pinapalpate lang, kinakapa lang. Okay, so, ang next training course will now depend on how he has developed as uh, physically. So, the next, Next step for him now is to receive the the, the mystic eyes of Kuwatade wherein his field of vision will be will now be like sort of an eagles parang gano, gano kalay when when the when uh, the surgery was over gano kalayo na ang kaya niyang ano ang kaya niyang makita even the fish the fishes in the river the animals in the in the deepest edges of the forest, nakikita na niya. And, yung aura ng tao, nakikita rin niya. So, he saw his own father's aura, kahit yung kanya. Na ha ham hamak talaga na mas malakas ang aura ng, ng tatay niya. So now, uh, his father is so pleased with him, ginrat na niya yung matagal na niyang wish na matutong gumamit ng magic. So, he hires a mentor which now leads us to the final scene. His mentor pala is Dia. One of the members of his assassination team which we we got introduced to during the pilot. That was during the opening scene. Whoa. Talk about OP mentors. So, let's break this episode down ARD style. Pace. Tama lang yung pacing. Kasi, we need this kind of a pacing in order for, what well, para maintindihan natin lalo kung ano yung uh, character development ni Lu. Okay? He's now known as Lu. L-U-G-H. Dito natin talaga nakita yung yung, uh, yung panimulang character development ni Lu. So, from the time he was born, uh, he was reborn up to the time he was 7 years old. So, this is where he receives his magic training. Kung binilisan nila ang, ang page ng episode to, baka nawalan ako ng gana, personally. I don't know about you, mga ka lifestyle. If, if you're going to devote an entire episode for, uh, for character development, it should be this slow a pace. Para ma manamnam mo kung ano pinagdadaanan ng 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 main protag sa na dinadana siyang character development. No complaints about the pacing. Flow naman. First gear shift. Well, was when Ahem sent him now to be reborn after choosing his uh, attributes and his skills. Bahay ko tinawag na gears ito. Simple lang! Whatever skills and attributes he he chose here, dala na niya yun sa buong buhay niya sa magiging bagong mundo niya. Did he make the wrong choice? We still don't know. Did he um, uh, chose wrong? We still don't know. Kasi episode 2 pa lang. Dito pa lang siya pumili ng skills and attributes niya. That's why I called it a gear shift. So, whatever, uh, whatever choices he made here will either uh, serve him well or haunt him down the line in this anime. Ganun lang yan. Final gear shift was when he received the mystic eyes of Tuwatade. Kumbaga, yung tatay niya mismo ang nag-surgery sa kanya. Because, well, he was born into... A family of doctors who also double as assassins. Kaya, ang tatay niya, doktor na, assassin pa. <laughs> so, 
the scientific way of killing people, yeah, they know. <laughs> Pero dito, in this case, uh, he received the, surg the, the surgical procedure from his father. Yung father niya mismo ang nag-perform sa kanya ng, surg ng surgery na yun. And, sinabi ng father niya rito that someday, he is going to teach that same surgical procedure to Lou. Para magawa naman ni Lou sa magiging anak niya. Why did I call this a gear shift? Because we see now here on how much the nobility, even in real life, keep within the family the, the skills they acquire, the money they make, the the businesses they have uh, they have grown so these two gear shifts definitely will play a role in this anime especially yung pangalawa because he is an assassin sa na isang gumamit ng barrel na long range sa, sa mundo natin he needs to well he needs to to use a special scope but here, no, it's already surgically embedded in his eyes. So he doesn't need it. <laughs> Pero, siguro ang magpapa-enhance dito yung magic na marireceive niya from Dia. The magic training he's going to receive from Dia. Probably that will enhance his field of vision. Plot-wise, malinis. What about side story or back story? This is a serious character development episode. Kung lalagyan mo ng back story or side story ito, wala! Sira ang episode. And it is about uh, the main protag's character development. They devoted an entire episode to it. Which is really cool. Pag nilagyan mo ng backstory or side story to, wala, talaga, I, I tell you mga ka-lifestyle, wasak ang episode na to. Basag ang, ang, basag ang trip ng episode na to. So, pace, flow, and plot, bunti ko nang hindi ma-distinguish ang flow at ang plot from one another. <laughs> plot is so clean, I only saw two gear shifts. Pero, if you're, if you're just new into anime, you wouldn't see, you, you would see the entire episode as a gear shift. Pero, for me, there are only two. Na, down the line, magsisilbing uh, turning point for the main protag. Ngayari, kapag may nangyaring ganito, we can always look back to, to this episode. Particularly, the last gear shift. On how he was able to um uh to accomplish this kind of a mission or uh get through this kind of a scene, yun parang ganon yun. So, on Satsu Kizoku episode two. Isip pa. Wow. First time. Two thumbs up. Remember, mga kalaista, we we gave the pilot only the one thumb up. Cause I still feel talaga na. Dapat, sinimulan ang episode na to, uh, sinimulan ang pilot na yon sa, sa past life ng, ng main protag, si Lou. Lou's past life, to be, to be exact. What's important to an isekai anime is this. How was the main protag isekai? And what did he go through to totally adjust to the new world he's in? Kasi kung ito, kung yung gano'n na unahin mo, wala eh, hindi, hindi mapipil na easy kay anime ito. Kaya, episode 2 is a, a great way to recover. Devote this entire episode to the main protag's character development. And they did. Kaya, two thumbs up sa akin. So again, ang Satsu Kizoku, episode 2, two thumbs up. First two thumbs up of this anime, Maka Lifestyle, believe it or not. So what do we do now, Maka Lifestyle? We just do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Habang hinihintay natin yon, para sa inyo, enjoy the reviews in this digest.
this anime is about to uh, about to adapt the cells that work format for its episodes. Let me explain. I say first, uh, uh, first story. They well, Tatano gets reacquainted with his childhood friend, si si Najimi. Uh, who has who has no problem socializing with people? She can make anybody into her friend in just two to three minutes. Mm. You can see now it's the perfect uh, mentor for Komi. I don't think so, cause uh, Najimi shared a little secret to Tatano. She has a problem communicating with Komi because no mga bata pa sila eh. Uh, kahit ano pang daldal ni Najimi, Komi just couldn't uh, uh, communicate with her. So, well, kinunglod ka ka ni Tadano that. Nako. Ang problema pa na ni Komi ngayon ay simula pa ng pagkabata pa. Hmm. Talk about deep the disorders. So, second uh, story. Well, pumain na rin si uh, Najimi na Maging, oh, maging kaibigan ni Komi on one condition kailangan hindi na siya dapat kong tawagin o sana ni Tadano well, uh, simple na naman natin so uh, she tried walking with uh, uh, walking home with Komi and uh, when they were talking talagang nagpupumili talaga na magsalita si Komi then uh, siguro Two guys from from Najimi's former school. Uh, so I saw them, and ito malaking bubok na to. Meron pa lang hidden desire kay Najimi. Despite uh, knowing the fact that Najimi is, well, I'm suspecting Najimi as bisexual. All right, because meron din siyang male tendencies. Eh. So, well, um, uh, this big guy is forcing himself upon Najimi. All of a sudden, Komi interferes with, uh, with the guy's keys. Kasi, nung eh, nagtanggal pa nga ng jacket eh, tinapang pang ganun. So, habang, uh, habang tinapang yung jacket, ayun, lumabas, uh, tumilapon yung susi. Susi pa na sa bahay niya. And, how he got this idea that Kom is going to kill him with with those sinkies pero yeah, yun ang kagandang tapos sa isip <laughs> oh my fucking god but uh, eventually Kom saves the day for Najini and wow proud na proud naman si Tata no? well uh, as a result of this Najini decides then on to be sold on the idea that she is Komi's friend because, well, uh, she finds Komi funny. And uh, while, um, while uh, Najimi was uh, walking, sir, walking a great distance na, sinabi ni Tadano, oh, ayan, nakadalawang kaibigan ka na. So, ang tila yun. And, well, uh, in Komi's little way, she jumps for joy. Uh, final story. Lunch break. So, uh, Komi and Najimi are seem to be at ease with each other because they're they're sharing lunch time together. Ito lang si Najimi tila na pasitada no. Ano? Sa sali ka sa amin? It's it's a logical. There's a logical answer for that. No, for that. Sure, sa sali ako. Pay. Ako kaya ba ng ko? So that effect. Nayon. As part of Komi's communication training, sinabi ni, well, inutusan siya ni Najime na bumili ng uh, frappuccino na may ganitong uh, mixture. Oh, so, 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 ang daming, ang daming, ang daming, ano eh, ang daming nilagay eh. So, sige, hintayin, sabi niya, ano, sige, hintayin ka rito. Hintayin kita rito. So, off went, off went Komi to the nearest, uh, to the nearest coffee shop. Silod na naman siya ni, ano, ni Tata, no, patago eh. Patago na naman. And, labas-masok siya dun sa, sa dormies na ng coffee shop because 
she does have a communication disorder so she is having a hard time uh setting herself up for uh on uh on a potential uh, order from her kasi mataong mataong lugar pala itong coffee shop na to ang dami tao talaga so it's her turn na in the line so sinabi niya but uh she was trying to communicate with the uh, with the coffee master kung ano yung gusto niyang orderin eh sinabi ng coffee master pili ka na lang dito sa menu so eh nakita ni Komi na wala sabi naman ng coffee master so uh, ano niya hmm. I take a special exam and only I am permitted to totally understand the customer teka biglang sinabi ng coffee master alam ko na po miss kung ano gusto yung orderin teka muna Intay mo na kayo sa reception area. So, yan. Hataw na to, coffee master. Pak, 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 pak. Inanda niya. Kinungkok na niya. So, your order's ready. Yan. So, balik na sa, uh, balik na sa school si Komi at saka si Tada, no? Uh, Inan na ni, uh, so, nireceive na ni Najimi yung order niya. Yan. Eh, nakita niyang may mali. So, Si Komi, si Komi, wap. Oh my God. She took it uh, really personal. Talagang, uh, she pouted to the max. At ang sabi ng dalawa, ang cute naman ni Komi pag nagpa-pout. Eh, biglang tumingin sa kanila, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> the two quickly apologized. Eh, nagtuturoan pa nga yung dalawa. Okay. Sabi, oy, ikaw, ikaw nang pa-order niya na. I- ikaw muna mag-sorry <laughs> so, uh, Final scene uh, um, Sinabi na ni Najimi na uh, Talagang ano eh Talagang uh, we, we made a mistake So eh, Si Komi naman Tuloy pa rin ang pouting Ngayon nakukyuta na yung dalawa Kay Komi because of the way she pouts <laughs> Grabe. So, let's break this yeah, episode down. ARD style, believe it or not. Pace. Well, uh, I'm totally getting the idea of uh, multiple stories in one episode because the vampire dies in no time also does that. The, the cells at work format. Tsaka, ang cells at work talaga master sa ganyan eh. Sa ganyan format of um uh, presenting its episodes uh, two stories three stories in one in just one episode pero yung pace ng episode na to hmm. there are no tense moments eh. talagang slice of life ang ang dating niya so you can call it a moderate pacing all in all kasi may igli nga ang istorya mo bibilisan mo pa ang pace gusto mo bang mawala ng interest ng viewer? Ah, mga ka-lifestyle. Put yourselves in OLM's shoes. Tingin nyo, pag uh, binilisan nyo ang pace ng buong episode, may intindihan pa kaya ng audience kung anong nangyayari overall. Hindi yan, oh. Biggest lesson learned when it comes to um, pacing multi-story episodes like this is why of the house husband. Yeah, Goku Shupudo is the best example of uh, Multiple story meltdown. Biro mo, five to six stories in one episode. Tapos super bilis ang pacing pa. Kaya nga ako nawala ng gana sa anime na yun eh. Pero, uh, in, in, this, in, in the case of Comic and Communicate episode 2, hindi eh. Um, the pacing really made me uh, wanted for more. <laughs> yun ang yun ang ginawa sa akin ng pacing ng episode na to talagang um, you would really um, you would really uh, cheer Komi on for every communication exercise that she has gone through in this episode alone and uh, yet she's somewhat successful kasi tandaan nyo communication is doesn't just come out of the mouth it can on it can also come out of the face siguro yung coffee master na yon marunong magbasa ng muka yung facial expression 
Siguro binase lang niya sa facial expression ni Komi on what she wants to order. There are some baristas who can do that. Uh, I've seen it. I'm a coffee buff also. When I'm even uh, way before I took on the keto diet. Talagang coffee buff na ako. And uh, even even if it's only my second time in that uh, in a coffee shop, they now know what I want to order. Call me based on the pacing of this episode alone. I can now uh, conclude that Komi is slowly getting there when it comes to communicating with people. The more she should um, uh, do face-to-face encounters like this kasi talagang may encourage ka magsalita eh. So, Najimi made the right call here pero uh, the way she uh, the way na pinuna niya si Komi for uh, giving her the wrong order nako medyo masakit kay Komi yan and uh, no, he, well uh, Najimi and Tatano both of them real, both of them apologize naman uh, well overall yeah I'm very satisfied with the pacing of this episode overall flow naman hmm I think the first gear shift here came when Najimi uh, had Komi uh, order some coffee for her. Bakit ko tinawag na gear shift? Simple lang mga ka-lifestyle. This is an actual exercise that Komi must go through in order for her to successfully communicate with people she doesn't even know. With total strangers and the coffee master. And of... Uh, and uh, some other customers there in the coffee shop. Siyempre, it builds um, confidence and it also erases doubt. Komi is getting there. Kaya, tinawag kong gear shift ito. It's a character development gear shift somehow for Komi. Final gear shift was when um, what you call this? Was when Najimi uh, told Komi that she she got the wrong order for her. Diba nagpout si Komi? Malawal. <laughs> Dinir pe. And uh, nahalata naman nila nila dalawa ni Tata, no? So, they immediately apologized. Why did I call it a ship? Well, we can see here that Najimi is uh, true to her word na talagang uh, ginawa na yung kaibigan niya, si Komi. And, yeah, she really wants to help out now in uh, Komi's communication disorder. So, talagang tinutulong yan si Tada no rito. And, uh, well, of course, in her own uh, in her own way. Through, uh, yan, actual exercises. Siguro, ang dynamic niya lang ganito. Tada no works on the theories of communication while Najimi uh, shows Komi the practical application of it. That's what this gear shift will make you realize. So, these two gear shifts that I saw definitely will play a role down the line in this anime. Kaya, cheer on pa rin tayo kay Komi. Ha? Cheer on pa rin tayo. Plot-wise, planchado. Kasi multiple stories eh. And the way one story transition to another galing hindi yung uh, biglaan eh hindi yung uh, kumaga 1 to 2 sec 1 to 2 seconds of opening credits muna nope it went straight down to the sto- to the next story ganun dapat if you really want to retain the attention of the viewer this episode probably contains two continuities pero seamless siya when it came to when it came to when it comes to when it came to transitioning it kaya planchado ang plot napaka planchado so base flow and plot they all came together for this episode and OLM oh my god looks like you got another great anime here uh, of course the last one was Odd Taxi we all know that the best anime of spring 2021 so, Call Me Can't Communicate, Episode 2.
Ano nyo mga ka-lifestyle? When it comes to multi-story episodes, I would start watching it with, a, uh, with an apprehensive uh, feeling. Always. Kasi, medyo natatakot din ako na baka because of, siguro, fast-paced ito, hindi ko maintindihan. I, I might be totally wasting my time on this. Pero, this anime convinced me otherwise. Maganda yung, ano eh, maganda talaga yung pacing ng episode na to. And, uh, the way the plot transitions from one story to the next. Galing! Ang galing! That's nothing short of impeccable. Uh, my God. Uh, I'm an anime chef, alright. Kaya, kumago na ako. Chef's kiss. It deserves the chef's kiss. Pero, uh, sana tagtagan nila ng ano, ng iba pang call, coming elements kasi um, be, pero natawa ko na sa ano eh sa, uh, sa scene where uh, where Tato lang was mistaken for a stalker kasi kung yun sa pagkakasulot yun sa pagkakamanman niya kay Komi kasi talaga suspicious eh kahit bata na nasuspechan siya na stalker eh dun ako talaga natawa <laughs> uh, I, I found that really funny and um Komi's um uh, Bizarre, yeah, somewhat bizarre silence can really bring these comic moments out in the open. Uh, yun ang na, napansin ko over, uh, over, the, over these two episodes so far of uh, this anime. Talagang, especially when, he, when she has that chibi eyes look. Yung, tapos, medyo nang, nangingisay siya ganon. Uh, I, I don't know if I, if, I, uh, if I should feel sorry or if I would laugh it out. <laughs> Uh, wow, grabe, grabe. So to all of them, ngayon pa lang, thank you for uh, giving us another, giving us another great anime. Although it's only two, although it's only two episodes in. Yeah. Looks like Odd Taxi won't be alone in the um, in the uh, running for a spot in the lifestyle ten. Niya sabi ko sa inyo. So again, Kobe can communicate. Episode 2 Deserve the reason of my job What are we gonna do now? Of course, the drill we will wait for next week and watch the next episode. Can't wait for uh for more uh for more for more lap for more lap trips like the ones I saw here. So in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest model. Hmm We pick up where the previous episode left off. Eh, siempre. Si Miki Hisa, well, he's practically destroying Ren. Pero, in, in a, in a fleeting moment, medyo siguro naglak si Miki Hisa, nasipa sa rito ni Ren. Kumaga, matawag doon? May tawag doon eh. Basta sinipa sa rito. <laughs> So, so nakawala si Ren, but uh, in probably Ren's final attack, nag black out. Ayun, we just see we just see Ren uh, lying on a uh, lying on a mat, bruised and bandaged. <laughs> well, it's obvious. Tinalo na siya ni Miki Hisa, whose nickname, uh, whose in ring name is Miki. Eh, meron pala siya sa reeling team sa Shaman Fight na lalaban pala today. So, eh, siguro hindi alam niyo. Hindi alam na anak niya. So, well, well they, they were relaxing. They're having this uh, barbecue. Uh, sarap nga eh. Sarap nga ng barbecue eh. Kung mara, ayaw pang kumain niya ano, ni Ren. Then, the, the two officials that are, that are, uh, well, that are in cahoots with how 
biglang nagpakita. So, na-sense ka agad ni Ren. Uy, nako, trouble to. Yung team na na unang tinalo ng nila, nila Ren, nandun din. Kung baga, pinaligiran na rin sila. So, sinabi na lang ni Ren kay, kay Mickey na umalis na. Kasi kaso mo yung teammates niya. So, ayun lang. Eh, umalis na si Mickey. So, pinrioritize muna niya yung teammates niya. Leaving Ren, Horo Horo, and Chocolab to face all five of these shamans. Eh, halatang outnumbered sila. Pero, ang team ni Peyote, si team ni Peyote yun eh, ang lumalaman pa lang. Back and forth, back and forth. Then, all of a sudden, sinabi nitong itong malit na, uh, na patch na to, kapatid niya si Chrome, yung pinatay ni Ren na officiant. Wala kaya pala eh. This, this kid has an axe to grind against Ren. So, medyo na-rattle si Ren from, from out of nowhere, sinaksak siya ng oversold ni Piyote, yung giant skeleton. Wow! Uh, gumawa na ng paraan sila Horo Horo Chocolab para masave si Ren. So, kumaga, liyelo nila muna yung sugat. Laki dito eh. And, well, they're basically outmatched na kasi halos said na yung furyoko ni ano eh. Furyoko ni, ni Horo Horo. So, he can't keep uh, he can't keep Ren safe. So, final scene. Ayun na. Talagang outmatched na sila ano sila Chocolab at Horo Horo kasi Ren is down wow that was tough to watch okay grabe excuse me <coughs> so let's break this episode down ARD style pace and then let's I'm gonna put it this way second fourth of the episode are in our face <laughs> kasi Nag, 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 nagbabarbecuehan eh so may barbecue party silang apat team Doren tsaka si Mickey Hisa ah easy sila okay sige eh tuturo na nga sana ni, ni Mickey Hisa eh ng Ultra Sensei Ketsu nila tong tatlong to pero sinabi na mismo ni Ren dito I already know the technique eh, siguro binis niya doon sa sa laban nila ni Mickey in last episode The pacing will make you realize this. But, the entire three parts of the, the... The rest of the episode talagang tense ang pacing. Because, nagbabakbakan eh. Nagbabakbakan. So, natural talaga, the pace will pick up. Probably, uh, the pacing got 5x. <laughs> Ganun eh. Ganun ang feeling ko kanina. But, the pacing will also make you realize that this is one... Really tough to watch episode. Talagang maawa ka sa tatlo. Especially kay Ren. Because siya talaga una sumugod eh. Then, natigil lang siya nung sinabi ni itong, itong malit na, na patch na to. Kapatid niya si Chrome. Yun nga, yung, yung pinatay na official ni Ren. Uh, if you still remember that, he killed an official in episode... I think 4 or 5. 3, 4, or 5 between those, between those 3 episodes. May pinatay siyang officiant dun para lang makapasok sa preliminaries. So, yeah, that, um, nawala sa focus ng saglit si Ren. Ayun, gumalaw na si Piyote. Pinagalaw na yung oversoul niya. Naanasak sa crater. Tagus dito eh. That was tough to watch. And that's what the pacing will make you realize. How tough to watch this episode was. Flow naman! Well, first gear shift here was uh, when the two, yun nga, yung dalawang officials na kakampi ni Hao, ang, ang una nagpakita. Sabi ko, nako, po, oh, anong ginagawa ng dalawang mukong na to rito? So, what this was happening, yung isang team ni Hao, sinago pa naman yung team ni Mickey nang wala siya doon. Pero, nakialam si uh, si June at si Ana tamang tama kasi ano pa le eh? uh, before that scene nakipagkita si Silva kila kila yon Ana ayon siguro winarningan sila ngamiyano pa lang 
na merong uh, siguro nagpagalo na si Ren ng galamay this day. Ayun. Siguro hinahanap nila. Ayun, nakita nila. That's what this gearship will make you realize. Kaya nga tinawag kong gearship dito. It set off a chain of events na wow! That will make you, that will tell you na looks like Hal's not going to wait for the outcome of this tournament anymore. Looks like he's making his move na. Second gearship was what? Was when Ren decided to um to face Teotis team all on his own. Eh talagang eh habit na nga ni Ren na mang, mang itsapwera ng, ka, ng kakapi. <laughs> so well, that, that's just Ren. Kaya ako tinawag na gearship nito. It just goes to show you how how immature Ren still is. Although he has the fighting technique, although he, he said he told uh, Mickey Hisa na alam na niya kung paano ultra century yaketsu I don't think that's an easy technique to learn kaya oh, wake up Ren it's not an easy technique to learn hindi hindi na through observation yun <laughs> kaya ako tinawag na gearship ito final gearship was when well the final scene Horo Horo and Chocolat now realize that they're being outmatched here wala silang takas Kaya, bago nila ang nag-gear sito. Sinti lang! Oh. The lead characters are in the time of crisis right now. So, sinasabi ko na sa inyo mga kalaisal. This scene, uh, this gear ship that I saw, this particular gear ship, will play a role in the next episode. If not future episodes. Pero, Im ang immediately dito, the next episode. Yeah, well, you gotta hang on with the three gears of me, nah. That's the most that's the most crucial gear ship of this episode. Yung, yung huli. Kaya, plot wise. Malinis. Kasi, you gonna classify um the scenes that were going on while um while Team Duran is being assaulted as ano, as side stories. Hindi. This is these are parts of a well orchestrated attack by How. Wala nang ibang mabuto dito kundi si How lang. E puro ni Boris ito eh. So, that's what the plot that what, that's what this plot will make you realize because it is that clean. How's motives would not be very obvious if this plot wasn't this clean. Ganun lang yan eh. Kaya, pace, flow and plot they all came together for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Pero, sinasabi ko sa inyo mga kalahit sa This is a very tough to watch episode. Yeah. Violent, yes. And um, you would feel a lot of despair for the lead characters. Talagang, kawawa ang team na rin dito. And, uh, with, Ren down, tapos si Horo, sila Horo Horo Chocolate lang ang ang sumasago pa dito you're, you're gonna feel instantly for them so Shaman King 2021 episode 27 second half of the run na mmm thumbs up buti ko na din na mention sa inyo <laughs> cause well, we just entered the second half of the run and you open this half of the run with this kind of an episode Like na like. That's it. You've gone through 26 weeks of um, mga probably feeling out. Uh, a lot of character development. Well, second half of the run, we shouldn't expect anything less than a uh, an all-out uh war between How and Yo. How made the first move? So, it's now time for you to to actually do his thing based on this episode. Kaya, what a way to start the second half of this anime's run. 52 episodes po, Shaman King. Tandaan nyo. <laughs> so again, Shaman King 2021 episode 27. Two thumbs up. What do we do? 
Well, we'll just have to do the drill for the next episode. We wait for next week and watch it. Kaya, kapanapanabig ang anong to. Kapanapanabig na ang Summon King because Rock has already made his move. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this chapter. So we pick up where the pilot left off. Mirai is now planning his uh, well his next moves in life. After receiving these God candidate powers. Wow. <laughs> God candidate powers. Parang, ano, eh, parang solo rings a bell. But anyway, agree naman sa kanya si ano, eh, si, si Nase. So he applies for he applies for high school. Uh, eventually gets admitted. Uh, by his, and he just used his own ability sa hindi siya gumamit ng kahit anong araw dito. Then one day, um, he saw a bank robbery in progress. Uh, may mga, may mga hinostage ang mga ano eh, uh, ang mga, yung mga sospek. So, him and Nasi were watching, and who sweeps in to, to save the day? Si Metropoliman. He, well, he was able to convince the uh, the riot police to just let him uh, let him take out the the hostage takers. Well, of course, by using red arrows. Alala niyo si Metropoliman yung pumatay dun sa parang uh, God candidate din na puro wow. Eh, ang kasik si isang buong idol group that uh, the guy he just killed happens to be a comedian na hanggang red arrows lang ang kayang i ilabas so metropolitan was able to uh, to subdue the uh, the hostage takers yung isa uh, napatay ng kasama niya ito naman kasama niya pinatay ni metropolitan so mok okay since the day the press now talks to him sinabi lang niya to the other 11 God candidates, come at me. Whoa! Did he just issue an open challenge to all the God candidates? So, narinig ni ano to? Narinig ni Mirai. And now, uh, he, he had second thought. He's now having second thoughts as to whether or whether or not he should keep these powers. He wants to have Nase revoke them, pero no can do, sabi ni Nase. Because the moment na tanggalin ni Nase yung arrows niya at saka yung pakpak, mamamatay siya. Wonderful. Uh, he's now getting ready for his first day in high school. Yung pala, kapwa niya high school student itong si Metropoliman. Final scene. Um, Mirai sees another angel dun mismo sa complex ng high school niya. And akala niya, pag lumakad lang siya na without uh without noticing this hindi siya mahalata but pok bigla bigla na lang humarat sa kanya ang angel na to this is the angel of metropolitan so that means special rank angel din to tulad ni Nase okay so that also means that metropolitan is also in the same school let's break this episode down ARD stuff can't wait Excited all. <clears throat> pace! It's a good combination of fast and slow. Kasi, bumilis lang yung pacing nung sa bank robbery scene na. Because, well, alam mang, uh, i-concentrate natin ang episode na to dun sa kay Metropoliman. Sino ba yun? Is that the main protag? Ganun lang yan eh. If the pacing picked up as early as probably the first half of the episode, the second half of the episode, hindi natin ma-appreciate yung sense of urgency na 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 na, na kinasasakutan ngayon ni Mirai. Because, wala na isang God candidate. So, patay na yung si Rodriguez, yung comedian yung babaerong komedyan so there are now just 12 of them 
And this God candidate named Metro Polyman just issued an open challenge to the other 11. And gusto lang naman ni Mirai na maging maligaya. He just, he just wants to be, he just wants to live a happy life. Pero sinabi ni Mirai dito, if I want something to respect, if I want to live happy, I can't die. Natural. <laughs> Bay enjoy mo ba ang kaligayahan mo kung patay ka na? You tell me mga ka lifestyle. This is what the pacing will make you realize. Kaya, swak ang pacing ng episode na to. Flow naman! Well, first gear shift here was, um, was when they showed that scene again where in Metropoliman killed Rodriguez. Well, why, why did they call us a gear shift? Simple lang! Akala natin na siguro magiging uh, magiging kap- kakampi siguro ng main protag ito but no! You could see the look on Metropoliman's face yung wala siyang maskara He has bad intentions and he's only uh, what you call this? He's only showing a facade of being the good guy Pero uh, all he wants to do right now probably is to kill the other 11 God candidates para siya maging Diyos. Pretty evil, if you ask me. That's why I call this a gear shift. We are seeing here the uh, the birth of a potential... I don't want to call it a God can Potential Satan? Because she, he is showing a good guy's face. Second gear shift was when... Uh, was when Mirai and Nasi were witnessing the back the back robbery scene firsthand. Kasi nandu sila. Uh, they were they were actually they were actually going home na na nakita nila na that this bank robbery was in progress. Talaga may mga hostages. And yun nakita ni, ni Mirai na na may pakpak para tong si Metropolitan. So he quickly deduced this is a god candidate. Pero ang tanong, nasa ng angel niya? Yung bala, pinakita, siguro nasa bahay, watching all of this happen. Why did I call us a gear shift? Simply lang! The angel now knows that Mirai and Nase were there to see to see all of this too. Malay natin, uh, nakita niya siguro sa TV. Uy, may God candidate din dito nanonood. Ayun yung angel niya. Hmm. Babalita ko nga mamaya kay Metropoliman to. Pag uwi niya. At ipatay. So, his move of um, having uh, nasa go back home uh, first, it was probably a move too late. Kasi, alam na ng angel na to na nanonood sila. So that puts both him and Nase in danger na. Uh, welcome to the survival game, guys. That's what this gear ship is telling me. Final gear ship was the final scene. Ayun nga. Nagpakilala na ang anghel na to kay Mirai. And nagkataong Nase is not with him. Kasi nag, nag-usap nga sila ni Nase. You can't you cannot just um, uh, fa- follow me around right now dahil no uh, Mirai probably has a point delikado delikado rin si Nasi rito hindi naman natin magagarantya na lahat ng angel ay mabuti nope hindi ito ang vibe na nararamdaman ko sa angel na to at yung alaga niya si Metropoliman based on what we well, what we saw in this episode and this gear ship confirms it. These three gear ships that I saw, the last two will uh, will play a role down the line in this anime, if not the next episode. Whew. It's now a battle royale between the god candidates. Inupisan na ni Metropoliman eh. So, Mirai is now caught up in all of this. Plot-wise, despite um, this episode going back to the final scene of the pilot, 
malinis ang plot. Kung baga, um, hindi naman actually na kailangan yung scene na yun dito sa episode na to eh. It's just a way for, siguro, for Signal MD. Yes, Signal MD is the animation studio behind Platinum End. It's Signal MD's way of telling us what happened uh, as the pilot uh, ended. Kumbaga, uh, habang nag na si Mirai kung anong gagawin niya sa buhay niya, here's this other god candidate taking out another god candidate. At that point, siguro hindi pa aware si Mirai that a battle royale is going on between the God candidates. You can say that through the plot, we have... Oh, I can now personally say that Mirai is an unwilling God candidate. He is now caught up in this survival game, in this battle royale between the God candidates. And he just wants to have a happy life. So, down the line in this anime, pwede natin sabihin, he will be forced to fight these god candidates. Mano no choice siya. So, face, flow, and flop, they all came together for this episode. I repeat, malinis ang plot ng episode na to. Kaya medyo na-deep dive natin ng maigi ngayon. It's a really good episode because we have now been introduced to probably the main antagonist of this anime. Itong si Metropoliman. Kumbaga, yung, uh, yung good guy image niya, pang epal lang niya to. But he's got bad intentions. I, I can feel it, mga kalaita. So, Platinum End, Episode 2. Ito mag Ganda nga ng episode eh. Oh. Two thumbs up! This episode has a sinister nature to it. Provided by Metropoliman himself. Especially when that scene na... Uh, sinabi niya na... Uy, nasa high school na ako. Huwag mo sabihin... Uh, you'll be going to the same school as Mirai. Di ba mga ka-lifestyle? Ini-time nyo. A deep dive nyo. What happens if Mirai and Metropolitan go to the same school? Looks like Mirai is about to... Uh, Mirai's life is about to become a living hell because of this guy. Yun ang nakikita ko. And if Metropolitan is the true villain of this... Um, of this... Uh, of this anime... All in good. Kasi, he projects a, uh, a good guy image all the time. Eh. Talagang, ito, itong pang epal niya sa mga tao. Uh, he wants to have the masses um, uh, uh, by his side. He, oh, I, think, I, think he's, he, I think he's doing all this because he wants attention. Parang yun lang nakita ko rito ha. Ah. You know, nakikita ko mindset dito ni Metropolitan. He craves attention. He craves approval. So, let's see um, if if our theory for Metropolitan is correct. Kaya, tututukan natin dapat ang next episode. So, again, Platinum End Episode 2. Thumbs up. So, what do we do next? Simple lang. We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Kaya, enjoy the other reviews in this digest, mga kalaysta. Hmm. Tuloy ang paghanap nila kay Boko Sino at sa Kyoyokon Road. Excuse me. Pero mukhang naligaw sila. But, um, while this was going on, a backstory from Jaken. Yeah, you, who would ever thought um, Jaken would tell his side of the story? So, ganito nangyari dyan. Nung minsang 
Sinagupa ng magkapatid si Sesumaro at si Inuyasa, uh, yung meteor, nagdadasal si Rin. Uh, we all know uh, Rin is the mother of uh, Toa and Setsuna. So, nagdadasal siya for, of course, for Sesumaro's safety and for the safety of her daughters. Biglang dumating si Zero. She was then known as, uh, I think, Mitsuko or something. Nagpakilala siya as a, as a killer of, uh, of part demons. Kung maga, kung maga eh, uh, half demon, half human, half quarter demon, quarter human. Which is the case of the three girls. Yung mga main protags natin. Noon pa lang, gusto na niyang patayin ng kambal. Kasi, lahat ng half demon at quarter demon sa gabal sa kanyang kapatid, si Kirin Maru. Because, practically, any... Um, half breed na demon pwede pumatay kay Kirin Maru so, she went after of course the most obvious Sesumaru's daughters pinigilan siya mismo nila Sesumaru ano, Jaken pero before before Sesumaru could actually do anything niligyan na pala niya ng sumpa si Rin silver scale curse dito ginano na niya ng isang parang ah uh, tawag na sa Pilipino in um kaliskis isang malita kaliskis na ganun kinabit niya rito sa liig ni Rin it's a cursed scale so ibig sabihin nun kakalat yung magmumultiply ang mga kaliskis na yun so until such time that will completely cover Rin's body but ang, nangy- ang nangyari ba dun may ano pa siyang nilagay na Rider na curse na if ever something happens to her mamamatay si Rin eh si Sumaru was wearing was, was wearing to to cut her head off eh pero nakita niya may red string na nakakabit sa nakakabit ni Rin na galing kay Zero so he can do nothing Jaken thought of a plan ilagay si Rin sa loob ng Tree of Ages Okay, so that is, that is slowing the curse down. Then, uh, but while that part of the story was going on, sinusunog na ni Zero ang, ang sealed forest at that time. Kasi medyo, ma, medyo mga uh, medyo malalaking bata na ang tambal. She, she was doing everything she can to kill the twins. Pero, she failed. Yung spirito ng Three of Ages na kialam, pinadala si Towa sa modern era. Si Setsu na naman, ipinatago kay um, yung, dun sa, yung nag-alaga sa kanya nun. And, binili niya man ngayon, ngayon kay Jaken na uh, ilagay ang Dream Butterfly na to sa isang, sa isang tao na malapit kay Rin para mag-freeze ang time and uh, it, it, will, it will definitely delay the curse. Ganun nga ang ginawa ni Jaken. Jaken had a part in in, uh, in putting the dream butterfly inside of Setsuna. So back to uh, back to the current timeline. Nakita ng tatlong uh, our three main protags si Bokuseno. He's not exactly a person. He is a tree. Demon, parang, parang three demons eh. So, bigla naman mo siya mukha niya gano'n sa isang puno. And, initially, ayaw niya sabihin kila, uh, sa tatlo, kung nasaan ang, ang Kyoyokon Road, sa, kung sa matatagpuan nito, who steps up to the plate to, to, to convince Bokose, no? None other than Moro, ha? <laughs> Sinil, stock niya, ang, ang hilayupak na demonyong to. So, what? Unknowingly, Bokuseno spills the beans. Ayun. The Kyoyoko Road is found in Mount Usubi. O, doon kayo po. Tinuro pa niya kung saan, kung saan yung, uh, yung tamang direksyon. O, yan. Sundan niya yung, sundan niya yung daan na yan. Dire-diretso na yan sa Mount Usubi. Eh, while, 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 while the girls are going, going, going that way, may nabagit si Bokuseno. 
may barrier pala ang bundok na ito. Eh, narinig naman ni Setsu na. So, they were, well, the three girls were already at the foot of the mountain nung sinabi ni Setsu na. Uy, may, may harang pala ang bundok na ito. Well, more wise not surprised herself kasi kung kung walang barrier ang bundok na to, matagal nang matagal nang naharap ito ato. Madidetect ng madidetect ni ng demon energy meter ni Towa. And final scene. Pinakita yung loob ng bundok, merong merong batang babae na tutulog doon. So wow. <laughs> Let's break this episode down AR this time. Pace. Bumilis lang ang pacing ng episode na to when Jacken started telling his side of the story. Basically, how Rin ended up inside the Tree of Ages. Yeah, yun ang pinaka-gist ng, ng side story ni, ano, ni Jacken. Doon lang bumilis ang pace kasi they had to... Well, sunrise probably have to cover uh, at least half the origin story of the twins in that back story. So, medyo, medyo accurate kasi basically, Jacken is just a bystander. <laughs> eh, ali, eh, kutok, kutok alipores lang naman ni Sesh umaru ito eh. So, he has a completely un, unobstructed view of the entire storyline. So, yun nga. So, we, we can consider him credible kasi eh. Ayun nga eh. Alagad siya ni, alagad siya ni si Sumaru eh. Si Sumaru himself can, can twist any side of the story. Pero si Jacken, nope. Whatever he saw there, he completely told it all in this side story of his. Kaya, pumika pa basing. So, lahat ng, kumbaga eh, lahat ng back stories, from season 1, kinundens na rito. Kaya, okay lang, ang ganitong pacing. Kasi, ngayon, alam na natin kung paano napunta si Rin sa loob ng, ng Tree of Ages. Now we know kung paano. And, kung paano nilagay sa kanya ni Zero ang, oh, si Zero ang may, ang puno dulo ng lahat ng to eh. Now, we understand it because of the pacing. Flo naman. Well, first gear shift here was, um, yeah, when Jacken started telling his side of the story. Yun ang pinako ng gear shift. Bakit? Well, for me, it's it's probably the most important part of the entire backstory thing this anime is um banking on. Tandaan nyo, mga ka-lifestyle. It took Sunrise 20 years to create an Inuyasha spin-off. It took them nearly 20 years. Kaya, ang daming tanong na, ano eh, ang daming tanong na pwedeng, na pwedeng i-come up. So many questions left unanswered even during the end of uh, the original Inuyasha series. Marami rin tanong ang hindi nasagot din doon. And, marami rin nangyari right after that na hindi na, na hindi na pinakita. So, they're just showing it now as backstories. So, kaya nga gear ship ito. We now, uh, we now know Jacken's side of the story. Second gear ship. Nung nakita nila si Boko Seno. <laughs> he, well, he drives a hard bargain. And he's not an easy demon to deal with. What? That all changed when Moroha started talking to him. <laughs> it, simply na akong bago din ako na gearship to kasi they now know what Boko Seno looks like and they now know where he is. So, kumbaga eh, if they want extra tips down the line in this, uh, in season 2, pwede nilang balikan ito. Yan lang yun eh. Well, after all, they are, they are travelers. Si, yung, uh, uh, the three girls. Final gear ship was when they when they are finally at the foot of Mount Musubi. Ayan na. According to uh, according to Bokaseno, this Kyoyokon route is the only thing Kirin Maru fears. 
O, nasaks, nasaks yung tatlong babae. Nasaks silang tatlo sa narinig nila. And, it, I think it further solidifies um, Zero's uh, backstory regarding her brother, si Kirimaru. Nakipag, nakipagbakbaka pala ito sa Great Dog Demon, ang tatay nila si Sumaru at ni Inuyasha. Naputulan ng sungay ito. Talagang pinutulan siya ng sungay ni, ng Great Dog Demon. Uh, well, it, it's probably Kirimaru's most humiliating defeat. Eh, may putulan ka ba naman ng sungay eh? Nang, nang kapa mo nang kapa mo demon so yeah that, that's humiliating that is embarrassing so yung parte ng sungay na yun, naging si Rico so nagdeduce kagad ni, ni Zero that Kirin Maru is using Rico as a spy as a um, kumbaga parang CCTV niya na, na hindi nalalaman ni Rico well Nakalata agad ni Zero because Rico came from Kirin Maru's horn. So, technically, Rico is actually a part of Kirin Maru's body. Kaya, lahat ng nakikita ni ni Rico, nakikita rin ni Kirin Maru. So, Rico's encounter with Setsuna, yes, nakita rin ni Kirin Maru yun. Sigurado yun. 100%. Sabi ni Zero kay Rico, don't ever come near me again unless you want me to kill you. <laughs> Pero, we still don't know why Kirinmaru fears the Kyuyokon route. But, the girls now finally understand that the Kyuyokon route is essential in Kirinmaru's defeat. Kung magagawan ng ng panibagong weapons for Toa out of this route. Sige, kukuha sila. Kaya, uh, nagpupursigi sila sila Setsuna at, ano eh, at Moroha para makakuha nito. They really want Toa to to have her own weapon eh. Kasi, si, sila dalawa may tigis eh. Uh, Setsuna now has the Yukari no, Taki, Yukari no Tachikiri na kagagawa na ni Toto sa inon during the pilot. And Moroa has that sword where she, where she unleashes the Crimson Dragon Wave. Yon. A demon also created that. So kaya tamang tamang kay Moroa. Crucial gear ship, ang tatlong ito. Most especially the last one. Plot wise. Planchado. Because, yung. Uh, side story ni Jaken pretty pretty much explains it on why Rin ended up in the Tree of Ages at kung bakit ganun na ang itsura ng Tree of Ages bakit parang isang parang isang broken ng yelo na siya ngayon talagang sinadya ng spirito ng Tree of Ages na gawin yun of course with Jaken's help that's what the plot will make you realize kung kung masyado ma, kung masyado malinis ang plot na to we wouldn't know that And of course, the uh, the origin. Well, we now know Riku's origin. He's actually a part of Kid Maru's body, because that is the piraso of the sungai. He pinutol the Great Dog Demon during Kid Maru's last battle with him. So, pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode. Kaya. I can safely expect great things now from here on in. Kasi medyo maga as far as Kirinmaru goes, he's now more concerned than ever. Kasi through Riku, he can he, he has now assumed that um, that the girls are now coming closer to Mount Musubi. Alam niya that Mount Musubi exists pero may barrier ito. Alam niya yan. Because though his one and only weakness is in that mountain. Kaya, I think, yeah, he will make a move sooner or later. Kasi, andun eh. Andun na yung tatlo eh. Sa paanan ng bundok na yun. Kaya, ganda yung build up. <laughs> so, 
Y'all should give me the second act, episode three. Excuse me. Let me think it over what I drink. Mmm. Two thumbs up. Bakit? Well, you have to realize, Jack and side story is the most important part of this episode. It clearly explains kung bakit nagkaganon si Rin. And, uh, noon pa man, gusto nang patayin ni Zero ang mga half-demon princesses. So, our, three prota- our three main protagonists. That, ever since the three were born, baka sinusubaybayan na ni Zero ito. And, well, she almost had her chance uh, at killing the twins by burning the be burning the sealed forest. Pero, hindi siya nagtagumpay. Nakialam ang Tree of Ages. Hiniwalay muna yung dalawa. Si Toa, pinadala sa modern era. Si Setsuna, pinakupkup muna doon sa yung parang uh, parang ampuna ng isang ano. And, well, because of that, Setsuna is a fine warrior now. And of course, na nasave silang dalawa. If you're new into watching anime, mapagkakaman na part of the main continuity yung ano eh, yung side story. Nope. It's not part of the main continuity. But, it's a valuable uh, piece of this entire episode's puzzle. That's the way I, uh, that's the way I see it for this episode. Kaya, two thumbs up pa rin. So again, Yasha Hime, the second act, episode three, Thumbs up. So, what do we do now, mga Kalaista, for the next episode? We just do the drill. We wait for next week and watch that episode. Oh, ang next episode. The, the three girls are now that close to. They've just become technically one step closer to actually killing Kirin Maru. Makuha lang, niya, makuha lang nila ang Kyoyokon Brut na to. Kaya, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this life. Wow. <laughs> Our story begins when... Well, Shin and the rest of the 86 are, are, are in the middle of their... Well, their uh, training course at the officer's school. So, well, Shin, in typical Shin Nusen fashion, he pulls out one of his, uh, one of the somersaults he does with his, uh, he used to do with his juggernaut. Ginawa na rin niya ito sa, sa machine ng, ng Federacy. Tinambling niya gano'n para makaiwas dun sa isang, na, uh, tawag dito? Isang, isang bopol na, na nahulog dun sa taas kasi they were, they were in a trench or something eh. Para makaiwas, tumambling siyang ganun. <laughs> they were, they were both given a grade of zero. Yung Bobol, for incompetence, si Shin naman, for, for dangerous piloting. <laughs> I found it hilarious. Ito pala ang, uh, ang nagiging mindset ngayon ng mga ibang, uh, ng ibang kasamahan niya sa Federacy, na, ng mga sundan, sa mga cadets. The 86 are being viewed as the monsters of the Republic because um, well, we can say that the 86 have no regard for human life. Kasi ganun ang point of view nila eh. Pero, we all know how Shin operates. Okay, so, um, I think the, the night before their graduation, nirigaluan siya ni Frederica ng kanyang yung kanyang prize possession yung pistola na ginagamit niya no nung when they were still fighting for the republic yun yung pinang yung pinang yuyutanize niya sa mga kasamahan niya na ngayari uh, buhay pa pero talagang totally incapacitated as in ni ni uh, ni, pang, ni pag-ospital wala na magagawa eh kumaga Magiging ano na ito? Uh, well, we all know how the Legion operates. Pag meron sila nakita parang um, physically incapacitated na sundalo, 
kukunin nila ito at i-extract yung utak. Ilalagay naman nila yun sa mga, sa mga makina nila. Shin knows this all too well. I'll explain. So, sinabang na sila sa labanan. And, what? He has this uh, machine of his own that has his symbol now. So, technically, the Reaper is back. <laughs> Marami siyang tinumbang Legion that day. On, uh, on, his, um, on his first few days of combat with the, uh, for the Federacy. Then, um, nakita sila ni, uli, ni Eugene, okay? uh, his friend from, from the library, na nag-ano rin, na nag-officer school din. So, uh, medyo nag-usap-usap din sila. Then, all of a sudden, he, hindi na niya pinapansin si Eugene. Tapos, uh, ang lalim ng tingin niya sa bintana, nagtaka si Eugene. Then, all of a sudden, the alarm sounds off. Nagtaka rin si Eugene ba? When, uh, when Shin said, the Legion is coming. Okay, sige, so takbuhan na. Okay, so, to your battle stations na naman sila. Final scene. Frederica breaks the bad news to Shin. And Shin goes to where, where Eugene's body is. Yun yung, yung talagang, yung encounter site. Tinundahan niya doon. Nakita niya buhay pa. Pero, hirap nang huminga and the um the arm that still has yeah you guessed it tanggal na yung braso pero hawak-hawak pa rin yung locket ng kapatid niya so doon nakita ni Shin yung locket so bini, binili na lang niya binili na lang ni Eugene sa kanya uh, siguro to uh, give it back to her to give it back to his sister now Here's what the um This is where the part when the Reaper became officially back. Binunod niya yung pistola, kinasa, binarin niya sa ulo si Eugene. But before that, Eugene said thank you. And one of their uh, fellow batchmates na, uh, saw this. Eh, siyempre, uh, sinusumbot ng si Shin na, ba ba't gano'n? Pwede na yung parang may salma! Now, a, sup, a, a, a superior of theirs na ano uh, sumabat pinasalamat pa niya si Shin for doing that to well, para para naman silang lieutenant eh to Eugene Kumbaga, well, this, superior, this superior of theirs knows all too well of how the legion operates kaya okay lang kaysa na, ma, kaysa na makuha siya ng kalaban Shin's parting shots were this the legion is coming Gather your allies. So did the right effect. Wow! <laughs> Let's break this episode down ARD style. Pace. Well, um, it's a it's a good mix of fast and slow. Because opening scene, chapter training exercise, major tense. Then, uh, nakaroon sila ng break dahil gagraduate na sila. Then, sumabak na naman sila sa labanan. Then, um, a few hours break kasi nag-withdraw nag ang Legion for that day. Sinabi nga ni Shin kanina kasi uh, sinito siya ng isa nilang, isa nilang logistics officer na huwag masyadong gagamitin yung parang laser blade na ganun. They, yeah, the Federacy machines also have that. Umaga, in-incorporate nila yung yung technology ng Republic sa kanilang mga machines. Of course, courtesy of the 86. Eh, sinabi naman ni Shin, it'll be fine. The Legion's going to withdraw anytime soon. Ayun, nag-withdraw ka! <laughs> Taka, umatras ang Legion. The pacing will make you appreciate what uh, what Shin has done here in this episode. Bakit? He passed officer school with flying colors. Although, although he got a uh, a grade of zero in that training exercise, pero I, I think he passed it with flying colors. Kasi may prior battle experience na. He knows how to how to do business with the legion. Ano yung pano kung pano tumumbang ng kalaban? And 
Uh, I think it really felt good that the Weeper is back. Kasi, ito yung buhay na iniwan ng mga 86 nun eh. When they deserted the Republic in the finale. In the finale ba? Uh, oh no. Uh, in episode 9 of season 1. So, the pacing will also make you uh, feel happy for Shin because he wants to be in the battlefield. He got his wish. The Reaper is back. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say the pacing. Flonaman! First gear shift here was Shin's first few days on the battlefield. Talagang, he's uh, already made an impact to uh, for the Federacy. And of course, well, hello, I'm back! Miss me? Kaya <laughs> kasi siguro ni Shin sa mga Legion. Yeah, I called it a gear shift because this is the first day that uh, the Reaper made his return. No, he, he made his... But, okay. Second gear shift. Talawa lang yon. The gear shift that made the Reaper's return official was when he euthanized Eugene. Kasi yun talaga yung... Uh, yun talaga yung naging obligation niya to his comrades. Ginagawa niya sa sakapa niya 86. Kunyari... Uh, sobrang injured and talagang uh, mal malamit na siyang mamatay so all she has to do is draw out his pistol BAM! Baralid sa ulo para hindi makuha ng legion ang utak nito kasi ganun yung uh, nangyari sa kuya niya who is a former 86 kaya well the republic listed him as missing pero no kinuha siya ng Legion, yung at least yung utak niya at nilagay doon sa isang machine. So, in episode 7 or 8, nakasagupa niya ang, ano, ang kuya niya whose brain is now operating on uh, an enemy Legion machine. But, uh, in typical Reaper fashion, he euthanizes his own brother. All important gear shift, yung huli. Because, the Reaper has just made his return official. And well, the Legion, the Legion has taken notice. And so is the Job Federacy. So these two gear shifts that I saw, definitely Maka Lifestyle, will play a role down the line in this anime. Lotwise. Malinis. In an episode like this, you have to um you have to speed it up a little bit. There is no room for a side or a backstory here. Because uh, the episode made us made me understand that the Federacy needs to pop out um, soldiers as fast and effectively as it can because they are they are in a war. Nasagita siya ng gere. So natural yung uh, akala mo eh parang no, this is the main continuity of the episode because we get to see the progression by Shin and the other 86 and we also get to to see the Reaper's return because of this plot. Sabihin natin na nabibilis lang kayo sa pacing but it still follows a, it still follows the continuity malinis pa rin ang plot Naka, na focus pa rin sa progression ni Shin as a um, as a new as the newest member of the Job Federacy military. So face flow and plot I almost wasn't able to distinguish the pacing from the flow. Ganong kalinis kasi ang plot ng episode na to. Just not fast enough to to be boring. It's still a really exciting episode. And it's now official. The Reaper is back. <laughs> so, 86 Part 2, Episode 3. You should pa. Ganda nga eh. Oh. Ganda nga. What can we expect now from, uh, from the other 86? 
to step up to the plate also. Kasi, the Reapers just made his return. He made it official by euthanizing his own best friend. Kaya, the others will definitely step up. Kasi, siguro, yeah, more likely, maririnig nila yung mga exploits ni Shield doon sa kabilang, sa kabilang batalyon. Kasi pinag, hiwa-hiwalay sila eh. Hindi sila pinagsama sa isang, sa isang unit. So, they get to, well, they get to be their own soldier. Kaya, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be very excited as to how the other 86 will fare out in this war. Kaya, well, we, Shin has already showed us that, well, that the Reaper is back. <laughs> Excuse me. So again, 86 part 2, episode 3. Thumbs up. What do we do next? Of course, Maka Lifestyle. We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Kaya, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this time. Well, nalaman ni, uh, ni Sakura na na she and Teruto go to the same school. So, uh, para ma-refresh yung memory ni Teruto, din na niya doon sa, sa school nila. Nakilala ng isang teacher nila si Teruto. So, okay. Sabi ni Sakura. Alright. You you go to the same school as me? Sige, I trust you now. <laughs> These classes, uh, Teruto finds boring. Yeah, of course, he, he wants to he wants to battle. Now, someone named um, I forgot I forgot that girl's name already. But anyway, this girl actually um, scouted him as a challenger. Because kani to balayan yung contact lenses sa suit nilang lahat. It can also tell the wearer kung sino ang challenger at sino ang hindi. Nakita ng ng lenses ng bob ng girl na to that Teruto is a challenger. Ayun, hinamon si Teruto while they were while him and Zakura were on the rooftop. Nakita rin ni Teruto na challenger din to. Okay. Sige, I'll take you on. Hmm, dapat sa Biglang lumitaw ang dealer from the sky. Ayun. Bin pinagbigyan sila. Pa! Lumabas yung barrier. The battle is on. So, at the, uh, at the start of the battle, lamang itong girl. He, she brought Tertus life to just, um, parang four ne. Four. Then, in one point of the battle, parang nilang silang one ang life. So, Teruto brings out his winning combo. Ayun, natalo niya itong, itong girl na to. Ngayon pala, kapag ang unit ay merong nakalagay na 2, dun sa, aside, alongside its power, yung power stats, ibig sabihin nun, it can do a 2-hit attack. Kung baga, kapag umatak yun, dalawang, dalawang life ka agad ang tatanggalin sa'yo. Aray. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened when uh, when Teruto had um, alam mo, alam na kami unit niyang yun. Two hit attack din to. So, isang light na lang yung girl. Yung kalaban yung girl. So, natanggal yun and the next hit is considered extra damage na. So, talo. Talo yung girl. Now, final scene. So, Ah, uh, sige. Ah, uh, umiiyak yung girl kasi talo eh. Now, so all of a sudden, this girl uh, proposes the idea that um she should be taken in by Terato as her apprentice. Eh, sige, object to the max. <laughs> Terato. Eh, po, talaga makulit eh. So, he has no choice. May apprentice na siya. It's a rather, uh, it's a, a rather hilarious ending, but uh, the duel was great. 
let's break this episode down ARD style. Face! Well, just like Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens, a bat, whether it be a battle or dual scene, if it's a card game anime, the the pace always picks up. So this this one is no different. Talagang back and forth yung laban eh. And there's uh, there's something else that this uh, that the pacing is take two. There's something else that the pacing is also telling me right now. That there are other um, there are other players out there using other decks that that can also be potential threats to Tero to. Uh, napatunayan ng ano nito ng, ng girl player na to. So, he, she almost beat Tero to in this battle. Tero to's road to beating the king has become technically, it's harder now. Kasi, um, may mga ganito palang player. That's what the pacing of this episode will also tell you. Kaya, tama-tama lang ang pacing nito. For it's typical of a card game anime, so I got no complaints. Flow naman! First gear shift here was um, was when Sakura found out that, ayun nga, uh, she and Teroto are enrolled in the same school. Bakit mo tinawag na gear shift? Well, simple lang. Sakura has already accepted the role of being Teroto's handler. And this was evident during the final scene of the pilot. Kasi tinalo nga ni Tero to eh. So, and, um, na-realize niya, at the moment she got, uh, beaten by Tero to, na, the Messiah is here. Kaya, sabi niya, Tero to, I am betting everything I have on you. Lalo mababadali ngayon ang trabaho niya bilang handler kung enroll sila in the same school. Mababantay niyo kayo si Tero to. Ganun lang yan eh. Yun ang trabaho talaga ng handler. <laughs> Kaya ako nila ako na gear shift to. Final gear shift. Dalawa lang yun. Is when Tero to beat this... Uh, I, re I really forgot that girl's name. Yung girl player na to. Bakit ko nila ako na gear shift? No brainer. With this gear shift, Teroto now becomes inadvertently a mentor to this player. <laughs> Kasi, well, siguro, well, obviously, uh, this girl player is impressed of, uh, is impressed with Teroto's playing style. Talagang, uh, Teroto is a scary good player. And siguro, she is also convinced that Teroto is the only one who can beat the king. He that he has what it takes talaga to beat the king. So why why go up against him another time when you can be this guy's uh, apprentice? You can learn something. Good move dito yung sa girl player. <laughs> Ayaw din the gear shift. And another reason why I call this the gear shift is because what Teroto's inner circle is now. It's slowly taking shape na kasi he already has Zakura. At itong girl player na to, apprentice niya. So he's got a, he's got a really swell inner circle being uh being built up around him. Kaya kaya ko the gear shift to because every main protag needs an inner circle. Ha? So these two gear shifts that I saw the last one will play a role down the line in this anime. Plot-wise. Malinis. Kahit may ganitong... Although I'm not totally familiar yet with the rules of Build Divide, and uh, with this uh, battle scene, if it weren't for the plot, hindi ako may enlighten ng... Uh, pabor. When it comes to the rules of this game. Talagang... Medyo naiintindihan ko na kung paano, paano ilaro ito. Just by watching this episode. Kaya, if it, if it weren't for its clean plot, baka hindi ko naiintindihan ang, ang iba pang rules ng game na to. Kaya, I really have to thank Leiden Films for giving 
for for giving us a uh, a very clean plot for this episode. So pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode. Again, Build Divide Code Black is yeah. done by Leiden Films. Yeah. So, Build Divide Code Black Episode 2? Yeah, I'm gonna make it. Oh, thumbs up! I am slowly being tempted by this anime to really take up the game. Ang problema nga lang, wala pang Build Divide dito sa Pilipinas. Wala pang player dito. But, um, if either Neutral Grounds or Courtside would announce that, that they will, um, that they will become, uh, the game's distributor here, I might take it up. Kasi, yung rules niya, offline, yung actual rules niya, halos pareho lang sa ano eh. Uh, yung speed niya, halos pareho sa Yu-Gi-Oh! So, I may be quite at home with the, with the speed of this game. So, sa akin learning curve niya, mas mahila pa ang Yu-Gi-Oh! Eh. Mas, 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 mas mataas pa learning curve ng Yu-Gi-Oh! kaysa probably this one. So, I think I'm gonna have a good time uh, mastering this card game. Kung meron na rin itong stocks ng cards dito sa Pilipinas. Diba? And wow, well, it's a... Uh, the enemy is a good marketing ploy for the game. Uh, I tell you, like in the tradition of Card Fight Vanguard and of course Future Card Body Fight, two animes that are based also based on a card game. Pero um, alongside Yu-Gi-Oh, magandang marketing ploy to for or to attract new players. Ako na attract nga sa rules ng game. I really wanna take it up. So, Lightning Films. Ngayon pa lang, saludo ko sa inyo for, for um, taking on the anime adaptation of this game. Talagang, wow! After Tokyo Revengers, ito naman. Uh, you're, um, you're over-delivering, guys. You're over-delivering. So again, Build Divide Cold Black, Episode 2. Two thumbs up. So, what do we do now? Well, of course, we do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. In the meantime, mga lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Huh? Enjoy lang kayo.